The slides are visible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, okay. Good afternoon, friends. So, as introduced by Dr. Sugana, I am Dr. Parishuram Patroti, uh, working at our uh, Indian Institute of Military Research Regional Station, Solapur. And uh, the topic on which today I am going to deliver my talk, uh, maybe for 25 to 30 minutes, uh, is on development of farmers' preferred varieties uh, for rabi sorghum growing regions in India. So this word farmers preferred varieties is a very important because uh, whatever we are dealing today, uh, maybe it is a technology, maybe it is a product or maybe it is a, any variety. So it should be a farmer centric uh, because otherwise uh, if it remains to on the only academic grounds, uh, there is uh, not much value unless it reaches to the farming community. Uh, in this context, uh, I feel uh, breeding uh, setting objectives in consideration with the farmers' problems and location-specific needs is very important thing. So that's why I chosen this topic uh, uh, as a development of farmers' preferred varieties for rabi sorghum growing regions in India. Okay, you uh, you know already that uh, sorghum uh, is a multi-purpose climate smart crop. Uh, sorghum usually it is a diploid uh, whose chromosome number is 20 and it is a C4 plant with high photosynthesis, photosynthetic efficiency and uh, grain sorghum is one of the most important cereals of the semi-arid tropics and you know there are different commodity groups are available in, uh, in case of uh, sorghum uh, we have grain sorghum we have sweet sorghum fodder for forest sorghum and high biomass uh, sorghum as well so among that, uh, we have a majority uh, of the sorghum is considered to be a grain sorghum, uh, under which we have karif as well as rabi sorghum. Uh, karif sorghum is uh, also called as a rainy sorghum, uh, which is completely under uh, rainy conditions, like uh, usually in the month of, it starts from June to September, September or October. And uh, rabi means it is a post rainy season. Uh, once after our rains gets over, and whatever the residual soil moisture is available. So based on that, we're going to take up the crop uh, that is called post rainy season. So these are two important terms one should understand. One is Karif, another one is Rabi Sorghum. Rabi Sorghum is also considered as a post rainy season sorghum. In India, uh, we, we are aware about Rabi Sorghum, but when you communicate with any international journals and other things, uh, it, is, it is better to mention it is a post rainy season sorghum. So um, mostly, uh, Karif as well as Rabi sorghum, they have got their own potentialities. Like uh, Karif sorghum is usually, the grain is not uh, uh, that much quality in nature. So those will be fed to the uh, poultry industry or other industrial applications. So whereas in Rabi sorghum, it is exclusively known for its grain and fodder quality. So most of you consume uh, Rabi jar rotis and other value added products which is exclusively made out of rabi sorghum. And it is the more preferred crop in dryland agriculture system because uh, so uh, when there is no rain, there is no source of irrigation available with farmer. So only the thing comes into mind is that rabi sorghum. So it is a more preferred crop in dryland agriculture system. And crop is mainly grown in residual soil moisture conditions and mostly under shallow to medium soils with less use of fertilizers. Uh, the average productivity of rabi sorghum is uh, very low. Uh, despite of all our uh, crop improvement efforts, still we could not able to break that plateau. Uh, still we could not able to come out with uh, so much improvement in the yield. Uh, whereas in karib sorghum, it is around 1100 kg per hectare. Comparatively better in case of karib, uh, but we could not able to achieve in rabi sorghum. That is one, one concern. Uh, what we are focusing in our research programs. Despite low productivity, grain quality of rabi sorghum is much superior than the karib sorghum, uh, mainly due to absence of grain mode infections. Uh, in Maharashtra, if you look at the trend, a shift in cropping pattern from uh, karib to rabi has been observed over the years because the farmers are willing to take up rabi sorghum 
because most of the area is under dryland agriculture, uh, dryland cultivation, uh, especially in Maharashtra. And uh, sorghum and rabi sorghum particularly is one of the major important crop of Maharashtra. Uh, varieties are more preferred and successful than hybrids. Uh, it indicates that there is a lot of scope for varietal improvement and varietal expansion than hybrids because uh, hybrids lacks one or the two characters, which also I'm going to uh, discuss with you um, a bit later. So again, the very important thing, if you if you see uh, the available varieties and uh, if you see the talk of the day is still much of the area is still covered by M35-1, uh, which was bred around seven and a half de decades ago. But uh, present cultivars, there is a serious need to rectify in terms of certain specific traits for better acceptance. Otherwise, it is always uh, in the mind of farmers that it is a M35-1. Still, after since uh, seven and a half years, uh, decades ago, uh, decades after. So, rain fed crop often suffers from soil moisture stress, uh, uh, resulting in low productivity of sorghum. This is one of the important uh, aspect, uh, especially terminal drought stress, uh, what we are focusing. So, this is the area and production scenario. If you look at at the global level, around 42.10 million hectare area and around uh, 59.30 uh, million tons of production. Uh, in India, around 4.48 million ton hectare, out of which Karif has got 1.69 and Rabi has got 2.79. Uh, the area, area decline in Karif is very drastic, but in Rabi sorghum, it is compared to a bit stable. So there is a hope and a lot of scope for Rabi sorghum uh, in, in Rabi sorghum. So you can see the production is also equally stabilized in case of Rabi sorghum, but this production is not enough. Uh, we need to uh, improve the, our productivity levels and also the area of Rabi sorghum needs to be expanded wherever there is a possibility. And uh, across in India, around 70% area in sorghum uh, is in Maharashtra, 25% uh, in Karnataka, and around just around 3% in case of uh, uh, Andhra Pradesh, uh, Tamil Nadu, and Gujarat. Uh, so major share goes Maharashtra. That's why uh, the regional station of IMR uh, with the very purpose of improvement of Rabi Sorghum has been established in, in, in Solapur uh, of Maharashtra state. And these are the, some of the important uh, states uh, with their uh, districts. You can see in Maharashtra, uh, usually Solapur, Ahmednagar, Pune, Bid, Usmanabad, and Aurangabad, uh, they are majorly growing the Sorghum, Rabi Sorghum. In Karnataka, Vijaypur, Gulbarga, and Raichur. Andhra Pradesh, uh, Prakasham district, Karnul, Anandpur, and Kadapa. Telangana, we have Rangaredi districts, Medak, Nijamabad, Mahbubnagar, and Adilabad. And Tamil Nadu, uh, these are the districts where uh, there is a Rabi Sorghum. Uh, so, uh, on the basis of agroclimatic zones across states in India, uh, we have classified, we broadly classified into five zones, or you can call five different state-wise classifications. So one is uh, Maharashtra, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, and Gujarat. And uh, in, in Maharashtra, there are like zones, like Western Maharashtra Plain Zone, uh, Scarce Zone, it comes on Zone 7, Central Maharashtra Plain Zone, uh, Eastern, Eastern Vidarbha Zone. Uh, so like that, uh, based on the agroclimatic zones and uh, the favorable conditions, wherever there is a dry land, uh, agriculture system is existing and persisting in the Maharashtra state. Accordingly, uh, the zones have been classified and uh, the uh, focus on Rabi Sorghum has been given. So in Karnataka also and Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu and Gujarat, and this agroclimatic zones helps us to evaluate the, uh, the material. Once we generate the material, uh, which can be uh, tested in ACRIP multi-location testing, and that ACRIP multi-location testing is uh, mainly rely on uh, this agroclimatic zones uh, based classification. So, as I uh, uh, earlier earlier mentioned that development of any production technology or improved variety or product, so it should be a farmer centric. So today, uh, any any institute which is working on a particular commodity or a crop, so the, our ultimate aim we should give something to the farmers. Uh, maybe it is a production technology, maybe it is an improved variety or a product 
whatever it may be. So it should reach to the farmers for their betterment. So, and those things will only possible when we consider the location specific needs of the farmer, when we consider the farmer's opinion in our breeding program, then only we can breed the varieties based on the farmer's preferences, not just based on the academic importance. So when we consider the farmers into our breeding programs, so then we can breed the farmer's preferred varieties and it is mostly very, very important in case of rabi sorghum. Uh, because why M35-1 or Maldendi is so popular among the farmer in Maharashtra or in India, because for Maldendi, we have a separate minimum support price. And altogether, all sorghum hybrids and other sorghums have a separate minimum price. The very fact is that uh, this Maldendi or M35-1, they have a very unique features, which are preferred by the farmers. That's why still the for M35-1 and M uh, Maldandi are so popular among the farming community. Uh, so ultimately what matters is, it is the farmer's acceptance. It's the spread and profitability to the farmer. It is not the how many number of varieties we are breeding or how many number of varieties we are developing. Ultimately, how many number of varieties or how, how many varieties which we have released are in farmers' feed with their spread, better spread, and which is giving a remunerative price or profitability to the ultimate stakeholder we call farmer. Okay. So when we talk about farmers' preferred traits in sorghum, so when we start uh, asking and inquiring about uh, what is their opinion about rabi sorghum and what are the important traits they look for uh, look for um, in their cultivars. Uh, to for have a better adaptation for to have a better quality so uh, so these are the some of the uh, parameters uh, what the farmers usually say uh, whenever we talk about the rabi sorghum varieties so first example is first important thing it should be dual purpose uh, in rabi sorghum situation is as we are going, growing in a residual soil moisture conditions and farmer depend on a uh, farmer is living with a lot of his livestock and uh, other other uh, other things. So, so for him, both grain as well as fodder is very important. So, some most of the times, even uh, alone grain alone or stover alone may not impress the farmer. He always says that I need equally important. I need grain more than a grain. I need stover as well. So that is a very important point we need to consider while breeding our varieties. Second is compact panicles. Farmers feel that compact panicles uh, shows less bird damage. So that is also very important and it is a proven fact as well. Uh, bird and lustrous grains, like uh, it should have a high market price. Uh, bird and lustrous grain have a separate grading in the market. When you, when you go for purchasing some sorghum uh, seed, uh, so they have a different grading systems. So the grain which, which is having a bold and lustrous grain, they fetch higher price in the market. Their price is a bit comparatively higher than the, the other grades. So breeding for bold and lustrous grains is also one of the important farmer preferred trait. Next, uh, because this is a dryland crop, nobody is ready to go for a chemical uh, way of maintaining the managing the uh, insects or pests or a diseases. They want with less inputs, minimum, uh, cost of cultivation, they should get more. That is the idea in dryland farming. Even most of the farmers just they simply they sow the seed and they go and they will come at the time of harvest. So that is the situation. So under that conditions, we're really not going to um, force them or suggest them to go for a chemical way of controlling any insect or pest. So it's the variety should have a uh, the, the acceptable range of uh, tolerance or resistance to insect pests, tolerance to diseases, especially these are the some of the insects and the uh, pest uh, uh, diseases I've mentioned here, like shoot fly is very important, stem borer is important, and aphids are very important in case of rabi sorghum. So similarly, when you talk about this, uh, charcoal rot and rust are most important. And uh, uh, Especially rabi sorghum is grown in like uh, soil like shallow, medium and deep soils. Uh, usually uh, the soils are very varied in nature. We don't have a uniform uh, patch of soils in, in, in farmers' fields. Even in our breeding stations, 
uh, we don't find the uniform uh, soil depth. So for that, there is a well-established concept is there in Rabi Sorghum called shallow, medium, and deep soils. And accordingly, we should uh, breed the varieties. Uh, it is called soil depth based breeding for Rabi Sorghum varieties. So another aspect is drought tolerance. Obviously, it is a dryland crop. Nobody is ready to give the irrigation. So uh, drought tolerance is one of the factor one has to keep in mind while breeding our varieties. And good roti making quality, of course, because the majorly the sorghum, rabi sorghum is known for its quality uh, in terms of roti and other products. So we should maintain the, the good roti making quality and store quality uh, with better palatability so that the farmer can happily uh, feed to the uh, his livestock. So here the farmer is very important. You might have heard the uh, the far uh, participatory plant breeding uh, concept, uh, where the farmer we make the farmer is also a, one of the partner in selection programs, in setting the breeding objectives, or testing or characterization of the material, and even popularization seed production also. Okay, so the participatory plant breeding program is very important. Uh, I don't know really how much strength we are giving on participatory plant breeding programs, but it is the need of the hour when a farmer will when when a farmer in is going when we include include a farmer in our plant breeding programs. So definitely we can going to identify some of the location specific problems. We can incorporate the traits of his interest. So, so participatory plant breeding is nothing but uh, the plant breeding program involving scientists, farmers, and others, others such as consumers, marketers, even policymakers. Also, uh, it is a broad term which is refer which we can refer as a participatory plant breeding program. Okay. So, we, uh, uh, in what stages farmer can be included and how he can help us uh, for a better designing a, uh, a program uh, which are based on the farmer's preferred traits. One is while setting breeding objectives, we can include him so that he can put his opinion, he can put his uh, interested traits with market value, what actually he feels about uh, different traits. Second one, generation of uh, variation through crossing also. So we can uh, select the parents, uh, maybe rec uh, our recipient parents and donor parents based on the farmer's traits. And third one is selecting in segregating population. Uh, for example, we can involve him like in the large segregating population in F2 or uh, in other advanced generations. The farmer can come and he can also assist us in, in, in selection of the, some of the desirable plants for which he feels better. And uh, fourth one is variety testing and characterization is also there. So here also we can include the farmers and popularization and seed production where the farmer can also help us in uh, producing the seed. And uh, these are the some of the advantages uh, I have listed here. One is uh, it is most useful for developing cultivars for low input and high stress condition. So we can incorporate the farmer's opinion and inputs at all the stages of plant breeding. So ultimately we are, we are developing a variety for the sake of farmers. So it is always better when we have some inputs from the farmers while designing our breeding program so that we can unnecessarily should not waste our time in targeting some other traits. So in this way, the farmer's opinion uh, matters a lot. And uh, uh, these are the, some of the other advantages uh, where the participatory plant breeding can play a very important role with the help of the farmer. Uh, fine, these are the things uh, just I wanted to make sure that what is rabi sorghum, what is, grow, what, what it, what is its growing conditions and all and where it can be grown actually. So it is not that only it is restricted to some, some states. Uh, based on the agroclimatic conditions, based on the dryland agriculture, uh, these crops more preferred in these areas, but always there is a scope to expand the area. So we can grow uh, uh, rabi sorghum in non-traditional areas also. Even a lot of seed we are supplying to the different parts of the country. Uh, the re requests are coming on a regular basis the people are more interested uh, to take up rabi sorghum in conditions where there is the temperatures are uh, very congenial. Uh, for example, 25 to 35 degrees Celsius temperature is a cordial temperature for uh, sorghum cultivation. So if that temperature is available, you can take up the rabi sorghum. Even uh, some of you, if you are interested, we can share some of the rabi breeding material 
or some of the Ravi released varieties so that you can test at your locations and you can also identify whether Ravi sorghum can be culti cultivated or not in your areas. Right? So that was the thing. Why one has to consider the farmers uh, while breeding the uh, any crop for that matter, but uh, particularly in Ravi sorghum, uh, this is the scenario, uh, especially in Maharashtra and it holds good for other states as well. Uh, so let's talk about uh, uh, in Rabi Sorghum, what actually we are doing. So first, uh, if you see, uh, you might have uh, read the things, academic things related to what are the main activities in crop improvement and all. For example, uh, it always starts with a germplasm evaluation, right? So when you have a germ, first source of material is your germplasm. You will, you will keep on searching the traits, whether available or not in the germplasm through germplasm evaluation, characterization, and conservation. This is the first and very basic steps in any crop improvement program. So once that's done, you are going to select a suitable parents. Maybe you are going to decide which is the female and which is the male parent so that you can go for passing hybridization or usually in the sorghum, we go for emasculation and pollination. And uh, you can also go for hot water um, treatment, uh, but so far emasculation and pollination has given a uh, uh, very good uh, uh, results uh, in, in Rabi sorghum. So emasculation and pollination is the best way. And fourth is generation of material. And fifth is selection and advancement of material. And this can be done with uh, various standard breeding methods like pure line selection is there, pedigree selection is there, backcross breedings are there. So all uh, breeding methods are there. are certain breeding methods which you can uh, employ for uh, self pollinated crops and certain for cross pollinated crops and certain for uh, development of the hybrid varieties. So then testing of the developed lines uh, through a ACRIC program. Uh, uh, most of you are aware we have a concept called All India Coordinated Research Program uh, for multi-location testing in order to uh, to come out with uh, the which variety is uh, suitable for which zone and what is the value of this variety, whether it can be raised or given to the farmer or not. So these are the broadly the different uh, uh, activities in crop improvement uh, uh, on which almost all our plant breeding programs will rely. So this is how uh, there is a generation of the material will takes place uh, for any crop, uh, but particularly in case of uh, Rabi sorghum, uh, if at all you want to breed a variety, you need to identify your uh, the female parent means the the variety or a line. Uh, for which you want uh, some kind of improvement. That should be decided well in advance and you can cross with the male parent and you are going to get the F1 and further segregating generations uh, with selection of desirable genotypes uh, like as our normal uh, routine plant breeding programs and you are going for the varietal release later on after testing in acrypt mode. Uh, so uh, in Rabbit Sugam, uh, we are not blindly going uh, to breed any variety. Uh, first, we need to product files. Okay, product profiles means uh, 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 whether this Rabi sorghum commodity uh, for which particular trait uh, we are breeding actually. On what are the characters actually uh, one has to breed. So, for example, uh, for medium late variety uh, in case of uh, Rabi sorghum, these are the uh, some of the traits which we are considering. This is we can call product profile one. Uh, especially in case of grain sorghum, rabi sorghum, uh, which is for medium duration, uh, grain yield, white, lustrous, and board grains, stover yield, non lodging, charcoal rot index, shoot fly resistance, stem borer resistance, roti quality, thin, juicy stock, terminal drought tolerance. And uh, these are our commitments. Uh, means we have already uh, standardized the, uh, already fixed the sum of the benchmarks. Uh, like uh, what should be the grain yield. Uh, suppose, for example, uh, as on date today, uh, CSP 29 is our national check. Over CSP 29 are how much improvement we are expecting. That should be the commitment. So, for example, in terms of uh, grain yield, in terms of stower yield, in terms of their tolerance or resistance to the important diseases and insects like shoot fly, stem borer, charcoal rot index, for that bench benchmark has been set. Over those benchmark, we are looking for improvement. So this is the work product profile one in case of medium duration varieties, breeding for medium duration. 
similarly for early duration al uh, also uh, it should have around 65 days of days to 50 percent flowering uh, with overall days to maturity of 110 days and these are the some of the characters what we are looking for uh, so only here the difference between uh, the uh, medium duration and uh, early duration is that uh, so we are considering the checks accordingly it means their csu 29 is our check which is a medium late variety here uh, fully anuradha is our uh, benchmark on which we are expecting uh, improvement uh, from the existing varieties and third one we have a holder type uh, so here the one more the opportunity in case of rabi sorghum not only it is like a grain for consumption of uh, uh, making roti or stover but apart from that, it has a lot of potential with respect to Huda type. Uh, Huda, if you see in the market around 250 to 300 rupees per kg, uh, Huda seed will be sold. And a lot of agro tourism is coming up now. Uh, so they are coming with the packages like per day 1000 rupees package. You can come, you have a Huda party, means they will give a, the, the Huda, the roasted Huda or the properly uh, boiled Huda. Uh, so that is the biggest uh, agro tourism which is coming up, uh, which can also uh, adds a value to the rabi sorghum crop. So in this condition, so there is a product profile. Uh, we should breed uh, the varieties which are specific. We call them as a specialty traits. Uh, specialty trials will be formulated to test such varieties or such hybrids. So in case of Huda, these are the some of the characters has been set up uh, to identify the best Huda lines so that it can be promoted or released as a Huda variety. So mainly here, the days to soft duff stage, here the physiological maturity stage or duff stage we are looking for. At that stage, we need to harvest. Uh, we need not to wait till the complete uh, uh, grain drying as in case of grain sorghum, but here at the stage of duff stage, you can cut the crop, you can harvest the crop and that can be uh, consumed as a Huda and uh, and Huda they are they have been uh, they will be tested for their Huda taste their size their threshability especially it should be threshed with palm rubbing it should be easily threshable so some of the benchmark varieties are available like Parbani Vasant there Akola Suruchi is there uh, Fule Madhuri is there so these are the some of the Huda varieties uh, which uh, for which we have a set of bench benchmark values. So over the benchmark values, we are looking for improvement on uh, Huda varieties. So we have another uh, 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 product profile called pop sorghum. So pop sorghum, uh, like uh, in case of uh, uh, in, in Jowar, there is a concept, especially in uh, during Pongal and Sankramana time, we used to go for preparation of these pops from the sorghum. So why can't we come up with a pop type of sorghum? Uh, in order to give a better value to the rabi sorghum varieties. Uh, so we have certain or some varieties called Fulia Panchami or SMJ1, uh, uh, which has, has a benchmark varieties uh, on which we are trying to improve the, some of the, especially breeding for the pop uh, type of sorghums. And uh, here, uh, the, character, uh, the classification and the criteria for considering some of the traits while breeding are listed here. And another one have flake sorghum. Uh, for uh, making the flakes uh, so that uh, how in case of uh, corn flakes and other things are available similar way we can make a very good flakes from the uh, sorghum uh, we should have a certain particular variety specific varieties for making the flake sorghum also uh, so uh, when you talk broadly at, at national level uh, uh, when a particular breeder develops a variety and when it is contributed to the ACRIP multi-location testing uh, so, you know, their uh, testing will be for three years, like IVT, AVT1, and AVT2. Once it completes the three years uh, uh, evaluation, then it will be identified, and then it will be uh, recommended for release and notified. Then the, it reaches to the farming community. So, uh, in Rabi Sorghum, uh, these are the six criteria what presently we are following. Uh, so, just for your information, you should know uh, the criteria one is if we have a variety, any breeder, if he, if he comes up with a variety from his station trials or uh, uh, the criteria either in IVT or AVT or AVT2, if we observe 10 or more percent increase in the grain yield over the best check 
and grain size is on par. So that will be advanced further. Second criteria too is if it is not reaching uh, fulfilling 10% more increase in the grain yield, you can go for more than 5% increase in grain yield over the best check, uh, for the, more than the best check, and tolerance to shoot fly and charcoal index will also be considered in criteria two. Similarly, in case of uh, early duration hybrids or varieties, uh, for which I mentioned there is a separate product profile. So where if your variety is having around 55 to 70 days of my, uh, flowering, uh, and if it is showing more than 5% increase in grain aid, so then this uh, lines can also be uh, recommended for further advancement. And criteria four is uh, if your grain yield, grain yield is numerically on par or more than the allied check, uh, if it is significantly superior for major insect insect and diseases or significantly superior for grain size so though it is grain for grain aid uh, is on par with the uh, national check so it can be promoted for next level and the criteria five says that it is completely uh, for hybrid if the hybrid based on diverse cytoplasm with numerical superiority or on par with the best check on all the traits of interest so that can be promoted and criteria six, uh, we have this criteria. It was not there in sorghum earlier, uh, but just three, four years back, uh, IMR has included a trial. We formulated a trial called specialty sorghum trial. Means where uh, the all uh, other time, except those grain, uh, uh, curry, we have a curry grain, rabi grain, and uh, four is separate, sweet sorghum is separate. Apart from that, whatever is remaining, like for example, I told you, uh, huda type, pop type, flakes type, uh, red sorghum or yellow sorghum. So all other uh, sorghums were, uh, are included in the specialty sorghum trial uh, so that we can give emphasis for that uh, for those traits as well uh, because they add a value to the rabi sorghum crop. So these are the six criteria on which uh, our entire at national level our promote, promotion criteria is based at. Uh, so as a IMR uh, not only uh, because some uh, we have a crip centers, uh, many crip centers are there, both for Karif as well as Rabi. So in Rabi, uh, 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 what we are doing, uh, because there are many important traits are there, like shoot fly, charcoal rot, rust, downy mildew, terminal drought, cold, aphids, shoot bugs, stem borer, etc. So certain traits have been assigned to these separate centers because the agroclimatic conditions are different. Each center may be in a better position to take up, uh, uh, evaluate, either evaluate or breed for certain traits. Like, for example, shoot fly, we have designated the centers like Parbani, Darwar, Rahuri, Tandur, uh, Vijaypura, Rahuri, Hagri, for rust, Darwar, Rahuri, Hagri, Solapur, and Downy Mildew, Darwar. So, terminal drought, Vijaypur, Vijaypur, Rahuri, Tandur, Solapur, for cold, especially Rahuri and Hyderabad. Aphids, shoot bug, and stem borer, uh, Solapur and Vijaypur. So, like that, based upon the agroclimatic conditions and uh, looking into the ability of the centers to breed for a particular trait, uh, we have assigned it is called trait specific breeding program. This is very important. Uh, so, just for your information, uh, so far we have a, uh, many varieties uh, in hybrids in Rabi Sorghum. Uh, to name some in, in in Maharashtra, there are many uh, fully series varieties are available. Uh, they are bred from MPK Rahuri and they are very popular among the farmers and they have a very good acreage also. So like Fule Revati, Fule Vasuda, Fule Chitra, Fule Esoda and M35-1 which was bred by ARS Mohol in Maharashtra. Uh, still it is a popular variety. Then we have our national releases like from uh, the central uh, releases like CSV 18, CSV 22, CSV 26, CSV 14 R with their uh, grain and fodder yield, uh, 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 for grain and fodder yields, uh, their plant height duration, the silent futures has been given here. So uh, in in compiled uh, page note, we can give some of the best uh, available varieties and hybrids with their suitable uh, features where we can accommodate these kind of varieties. If someone is looking for early variety, someone is looking for medium late variety, someone is looking for deep soil. So those varieties can be uh, shared across uh, across the country. Uh, material can be tested, and these are the uh, same varieties continues like uh, uh, both uh, national releases as well as state releases, uh, both in Maharashtra, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, Gujarat, Telangana. The popular varieties have been listed here. 
So this is state wise, like some of the hybrids are also available. Uh, though we have a hybrids, but uh, unfortunately hybrids are not that popular compared to the varieties uh, because of uh, the grain quality. And uh, most importantly, uh, in rabi growing seasons, uh, we may experience some kind of cold uh, when our flowering reaches in the month of December and other things. So there is a chance of uh, uh, there is a seed seed setting and less seed setting in case of hybrid. That is the reason why uh, our hybrids are not that popular. Uh, though we have a hybrids. So these are the some of the uh, variety hybrids I have given for medium. So we have CSS 59. It is a good hybrid. Uh, so for that we have a DAC indent also where we will be producing uh, the nucleus and breeder seed of parents. And uh, these are the other uh, hybrids uh, for both uh, irrigated condition as well as medium soils, even for dry zones. So uh, this is the list is available. This list also I'm going to share with you, share with all of you. And these are some of the very important uh, uh, varieties. Uh, means uh, uh, like M35-1, it is like a selection from Maldendi bulk actually. It is a selection. Uh, it is a, and again, uh, the DSC-5 is also good for, uh, which is a, a selection from Nete Maldendi of Gulbarga. Still, it is very popular among farmers. And Parbani Moti uh, is a variety which is popular and uh, bred by Parbani, Parbani Center. And PKV Kranti is there. And these are the fully series varieties, which are very popular among farmers in Maharashtra. And CSV 28, this is our, these are the, our national releases, and uh, which are also very uh, popular and good yielding. And uh, we can, uh, one can uh, cultivate these varieties as well. So these are the, some of the varieties which means if you talk about in Maharashtra, we have a trend that M35-1 and Solapur Dagri, they are very popular. Uh, so still we can't able to replace them because farmers uh, having very good, a uh, lot of love and affection towards the M35-1 and Solapur Dagri uh, because of their grain uh, quality, fodder quality, even less tolerance to the diseases and pests. On similar lines, uh, we are trying to develop the new varieties. So like COC-29R, Fule Revati, Fule Suchitra. So, so these are the some of the varieties or hybrids available in case of uh, rabies sorghum. Uh, so, keeping uh, in you know, some of the very important farmers preferred traits, and uh, at considering the national importance, uh, uh, we at uh, ICR Indian Institute of Millet Research, uh, even uh, I'm working at Center on Rabies Sorghum, which is one of the regional station of IMR, where we are taking up uh, uh, some of the breeding initiatives, where we are targeting some of the best varieties for their improvement so that we can give the varieties which are suitable for uh, uh, all the product profiles. Uh, like what I mentioned, there are five product profiles. Uh, we're breeding for all the five product profiles. Uh, maybe uh, uh, we have to look for, and sorghum is a very good uh, crop, which we consider a climate resilient crop. And uh, uh, all the breeding with the breeders, we have a responsibility to breed for uh, the climate resilient, uh, agree, uh, climate resilient uh, not only for a uh, gray need, but we should look for a climate resilience in the crop, like breeding for resistance, tolerance to various biotic and abiotic stresses are uh, very important. Uh, on, on that front, we have a lot of uh, our national programs, uh, even some of the external funded projects also, where we are looking for uh, improvement of rabies organ. Uh, so, you know, there are uh, different methods are available. Uh, if for any crop, uh, we have a systematic breeding methods for self-pollinated and cross-pollinated crops. Accordingly, uh, the sorghum is a predominantly it is a self-pollinated crops, but it is a often cross-pollinated crops. Always there is a five to thirty percent uh, cross-pollination is poly, uh, possible in rabi sorghum. So so far, uh, it was started like a uh, lot of pure land selections were also were, were the popular once upon a time, uh, but we are not really getting the good improvement. Uh, uh, if from the selection from the land races or from the uh, any uh, wild varieties. So what we are thinking, we are going for important, mainly for pedigree selection breeding, uh, for backcross breeding program, for important trait rectification. Uh, sometimes we are also uh, talking about some of the population breeding approaches also. Uh, so these are the some aspects where we are uh, evaluating the germplasm or existing popular rabi land races to identify some of the potential rabi land races so that those rabi land races can itself can act as a variety. We can, we can uh, develop and we can consider them as a variety uh, based on their performance uh, because IMR uh, Gene Bank has a lot of uh, rabi sorghum uh, 
uh, collections. So uh, we have systematically characterization is the first important thing. Systematically characterization and evaluation and identifying the trade specific germplasm is very important. So in this direction, uh, we are uh, uh, identifying some of the potential germplasm lines. Uh, so these are the, some of the germplasm lines. Uh, just I'm talking about the uh, over the three years, uh, uh, these are the some of the trade specific germplasm lines what were identified based on the evaluation. And these germplasm lines, uh, either they act as a donor parents for further uh, hybridization program, or they act as a, uh, uh, we can release if it is better than the, uh, some of the, our national checks, then uh, straight away we can contribute them to the acre breeding program also. Apart from that, we are also trying to create the new variability. If existing variability is not enough uh, to come out with a expected uh, uh, level of yield or stores, so we are going for uh, breeding for the varieties or breeding for varieties uh, by by deploying some of the Indian Cameroon Amanduras best Indian land races some of the multi trade specific germplasm lines also we are uh, bringing into the our hybridization program in order to target some of the specific traits and segregating the uh, generate the different segregating population so that we can uh, come out with, we can isolate some of the best varieties or best lines, which can be very much rewarding in case of Parabi sorghum. So simultaneously, suppose for example, our popular variety, now M35-1 we are talking about, but uh, M35-1 is not also not 100% uh, uh, excellent in all the characters. Uh, what are the lacunas are there in M35-1? For example, uh, the, the latest releases like uh, Parbani Jyoti is there, CSP-29 is our national check, but still we are trying to improve CSP-29 for some of the lacunas uh, in CSP-29 are. So like the BG, BJB-44 is there, PKB Kranti is there, Fule Vasudha is there, so SPV-2217 is there. So in one of my uh, reading program, we are targeting around uh, six popular varieties uh, for these different specific traits like stem borer, aphid, shoot bug, rust, drought, stay green, uh, where we are uh, following the backrose breeding approach with the help of markers also. So uh, we are going to develop in order to bring make a more enhanced level of tolerance or resistance to the, the existing popular rabbi cultivars. And also, we are also working on some of the different innovative approaches. So, uh, beating around the bush, like uh, suggest selection, crossing some state crosses, uh, their biparental crosses, they are really not given uh, much improvement in rabbi sorghum, uh, rabbi sorghum crop. So, we need to try the new innovative approaches. So, now a concept called magic, like multi-parent advanced generation intercross concept is available now. So such magic populations, how whether those can also give a very good variability or to make the more better because making a good parents, crossing between good two good parents, um, there is a lot of chance that we can get the good uh, uh, food uh, F1s or the further segregating populations. In this direction, uh, we have followed the two approaches like magic line development approach you can see. Uh, so I'm not going into the details of the methodology. So these are the two approaches what we are following to bring more variability, to use them for development of the RIL populations uh, developed from the magic approach. And later on, we can go for QTL mapping and better uh, genetic dissection of the traits, which can ultimately help us in case of in, in improving the yield levels of the rabbi sorghum crops. And from this approach, there are some of the varieties also in the pipeline, which are in advanced generations uh, trading. Simply uh, the thinking that the multi-parent crosses uh, involving eight parents, uh, some of the eight parent cross combinations have a better potentiality uh, than the biparental crosses, and they are better than the national checks. And those such kind of things can be promoted and they are already in uh, acrip mode, and they are in pipeline. Uh, so, the major constraint still remains same, like uh, uh, the growing crop over large area and medium to shallow soils, uh, where the occurrence of drought is much faster than the deep soil. That is the main problem because the rabi sorghum, uh, the areas in Maharashtra, Karnataka, they are not too deep soil. They are almost predominantly shallow and medium soils, and the low temperature, especially cold, is also one of the yield limiting factor in case of sorghum. <laughs> 
and uh, susceptibility to shoot fly and charcoal rot, uh, lack of appropriate hybrids with uh, a pack of traits which we are looking for. So this is the these are the four things mainly we we, we have to improve upon in case of rabi sorghum. And these are the again same some of the things which I have given. So uh, uh, just this is maybe one or two slides I'm going to wind up. So as a research front, we are working as a center on rabi sorghum at Solapur. We're working on rabi sorghum especially because this is the name itself. It is a center on rabi sorghum. Our major focus is on uh, development of uh, improved varieties uh, in rabi sorghum. Apart from that, uh, uh, we are also taking up pearl millet, foxtail millet, and finger millet improvement programs. Uh, we have a, a good seed production program of nucleus and breeder seed. And we are supplying the breeder seed and nucleus seed of uh, sorghum parental lines. Even some of the improved varieties, uh, uh, breeder line, breeder, breeder seed, uh, uh, and the truthfully labeled seed also to the farming community. And other activities also we are involved. And uh, Solapur is also one of the testing location, uh, very good location for screening of the rabi sorghum varieties. Uh, so we used to conduct all the plant breeding trials, physiology, pathology, entomology, and agronomic trial because uh, Solapur is one of the uh, best location for rabi sorghum uh, breeding, either breeding or testing. So, so uh, thank you. Uh, so uh, this is what I wanted to convey. Uh, especially this is all related to rabi sorghum only uh, because uh, I have not gone into the deep of all the uh, rabi sorghum approaches or how we are breeding exactly in rabi sorghum uh, each and everything. So just I wanted to give, uh, give a glimpse of uh, the overall activities uh, in rabi sorghum, how available varieties and what is the possibilities in future for air expansion and other things I will give on. Okay. Uh, so, thank you, sir, uh, for covering the important aspects of post training. That is, rabi sorghum. It is important as a, because it is used for the human consumption, and the fodder is very very important. Uh, and other uh, uh, products like pop and horda sorghum, and uh, what are the criteria for promotion? We have also covered the trade specific breeding programs in brief, and uh, all the breeding strategy. <clears throat> Uh, new breeding strategy like magic approach all and the uh, finally the constants sir kindly share the slides so that yeah one minute so you have covered all aspects sir major aspects of rabi so 